Hey everyone, welcome to ISTQB Foundation exam questions and answers. And in this video, I'm going to cover another few important exam questions and answers. In the last video, I just covered two because the questions were really long. And I believe this set is a little tricky and will really help you to understand different tricky concepts that might come in your exam and also help you in your real time testing jobs in designing your test cases, right? So the next question is about a storage system can store up to three elements and is modeled by the following state transition diagram. So this is around state transition and a variable n represents the number of currently stored ele elements. So you will see that there are there is a variable n which shows how many elements are currently stored. Now based on this what they are asking is which of the following test cases represented as sequences of events achieves the highest level of valid transition coverage. Okay so highest level of valid transition coverage is what they are asking. So if we talk about we have to select one option there. So let's analyze this particular state transition diagram. So here you will see we have a start state at, and we know that as soon as the element the, the storage system reaches three elements it moves to the full state. If it is less than three that means it's in not full state. So you start if you add one element you are in the not full state then you add one more so basically again if you say n n plus one one plus one which is two again not full when n is two and you add one more you change it to or you go to the full state if you remove one from the full state you again come back to the not full state if you are in the state in the not full state wherein you just have the value of n is just one and you remove that n n minus one you're still in not full state right so start not full and full now based on this transition we have to figure out which of the following test cases represent represented as sequence of events achieve the highest level of valid transition coverage okay so when we say valid transition coverage we have to cover this 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 and this all the transitions that are there right so let's see which one achieves the maximum valid transition coverage so first one says add okay so yeah say for example we are starting from here so add okay we are in the not full and then we remove again not full right so second one says remove so not full and then we again basically add so that means if you add that becomes one you remove again zero but you are still in not full state so zero and then you add one so again not full you are one then you add again which becomes two and you add again which becomes three so you come here in the full state but what transitions it covered the first one it covered this one okay then you removed then you add add and add right so it missed this transition right so if we want to understand this was missed right in the first case so this is not giving us the full coverage but let's keep it aside let's see if there is some some test some transition which gives us the all the coverage so if we go to the b add 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 okay so basically we start we add which becomes one we are in the not full then again add two and then add we came to the full state so once we are full we can't add right so this is invalid this is absolutely invalid so you you add you add which it becomes two you add it becomes three comes to the full state and in the full state you can only remove you cannot add right so this is invalid we mark that out let's go to c1 add 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 so basically add becomes one another add becomes two another add becomes three right which covers so basically this add 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 becomes three and then the next one says remove okay which covers this and then again remove right which covers this so it's again here so basically this looks is covering all the transition you, you can see add 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 remove and then remove right so this is basically covering all of that let's go to the d1 and then conclude the final answer so add 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 okay yes we know add and then add and then add it will come to full right because we have added one three times which is three elements and it's in the full state and then we say remove okay and then we say add which is covering this right so it's basically if we talk about the last one last one is add 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 and then remove and then again add so it's missing this one right so the correct answer is c so this is also wrong this is also wrong second is also wrong because this is covering the max the first one was valid but it is not covering the whole the fourth one is also valid but it's not covering the max so the max that one is covering is add 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 remove remove so c is the correct answer for this particular question okay so that's how you are going to come up with these answers okay now moving to the next one so you run two test 
cases t1 and t2 on the same code all right so you have the same code you run those two test cases test one achieved 40 percent coverage statement coverage 40 percent statement coverage and test t2 achieved 65 percent statement coverage okay which of the following sentences must be necessarily true okay so out of these whatever info is there they are asking which one of the following statements out of four just have to select one is necessarily true all right so the test suite composed with test t1 and and T2 achieves 105% statement coverage. That's, you, you, we don't get 105%, right? So absolutely incorrect. It will be 100%, right? So you're not getting 105% statement coverage. So that's why it's invalid. We mark that as invalid. There exists at least one statement that must have been executed by both T1 and T2, right? So we'll come to this one, okay? This is crossed. At least five, uh, let's go to third one and fourth and then we'll come back. At least 5% of the statements in the code under test are non-executable. This statement doesn't necessarily conclude that at least 5% of the statement in the code under test are non-executable. That doesn't conclude that, right? So we can straight away cut that out as well. The test suite composed of test T1 and T2 achieves full branch coverage. Test suite composed of T1, which is statement coverage and T2, okay? So you have T1 achieves 40% statement coverage and T2 achieves 65% of the statement coverage. So that anything on the statement coverage doesn't conclude that we are getting full branch coverage, right? So this is also invalid, absolutely incorrect statement. So which leaves us with B, which is absolutely correct. There exists at least one statement that must have been executed by both T1 and T2, right? How? Because see, T1 has given us 40% statement coverage, T2 has given 65. So if you add those up, it's kind of 105 and it cannot reach 105. So overall, there would have been some overlap uh, in the statement coverage or the lines that have been executed or, or covered as part of those two test cases. So there has been at least one statement that had been executed by both T1. Okay. So that's the correct answer. So moving to the next one. So let the branch coverage metric be defined as branch coverage x divided by y into 100. Okay, that's the formula. What do x and y represent in this formula? Now, they are clearly asking basically the branch coverage formula and these sort of questions are really easy if you have read the syllabus, read the, uh, gone through the complete course and understood the formulas and everything, right? So easily you can conclude these answers. You don't have to calculate anything. So basically here X and Y, if you read, okay, number of decision outcomes as exercised by test case, total number of decision outcome. No, that's not what the branch is all about. Branch coverage, uh, number of conditional branches exercise and total number of branches. Branch coverage is both conditional and unconditional, right? So if they have mentioned specifically conditional somewhere, you can straight away exclude that. Here they, are, they have mentioned conditional branches and again in D I can see number of conditional branches exercised by test cases and number of decision outcomes. So D is also out, right? So if you see the C1, number of branches exercised by test cases and total number of branches in code. It doesn't matter it's conditional or unconditional in branch coverage. It's both, right? So C is the correct answer. That's how we concluded because we found two conditional, two options which mention condition. We easily were able to remove those and the first one we already removed number of decision outcomes exercised by test case and number of decision. This is not what branch coverage is. It's more of number of branches, not the decision outcome, okay, for the branch cover. So that's the third question of this particular window video. And this completes the five question of total questions that I usually cover. So previously, in the previous video, I just covered two questions because they were really long. In this one, I covered three. In the next video, I'll again come back with five ISTQB exam questions and answers with details explanation. So that's all for this video. See you in the next one. Thank you.